And for me, the best Swiss army knife of health that I know of is a full night of sleep. Well, as a sleep scientist, <laughs> what, is, what is your routine? The first thing I do is I understand my chronotype. Are you a morning type? Are you an evening type? Or are you somewhere in between, a neutral? I am a neutral. I am neither a strong morning type, a strong evening type. I'm probably, I lean a little bit to evening type, but I'm a kind of 11, 11.30 to 7.30 kind of guy. So next, I do the alarm clock. One hour before bed, almost all of the lights are out. I typically try to stop eating around at least an hour before bed. Then I will usually have had maybe one coffee in the morning, caffeinated coffee in the morning. And after that, I cut myself off just because I'm someone who does have a high caffeine sensitivity. I typically don't drink, so I don't have the concern of alcohol consumption. The best night of sleep starts the moment that you wake up, meaning that when I wake up, I get at least 20 minutes of daylight, either sitting next to a window, preferably I go outside, take the dog for a walk, whatever it is, I get some daylight. I'll then try to exercise. Usually I'll cut myself off after about five or 6 p.m. Otherwise it can overactivate me. But exercise, absolutely critical. And then I'll just keep my meals regular. The final thing I would say, and it's the hardest of all things for people to do, reduce your levels of stress and anxiety. If there is a principal force that is preventing most people in society from not sleeping well, it is stress. It's what we call the tired but wired phenomenon. And so many people come to my sleep center and they will say, look, doc, I am so tired. I am just so tired, but I'm so wired that I can't fall asleep. And for me, I'll usually meditate for about 10 minutes before bed. I would say if it's that you can't fall asleep or you've woken up in the middle of the night and you can't fall back asleep, anything that distracts your mind is critical.